It's about 8 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, May 12, 2024. It's a nice, cool morning. Either in the low 70s or the upper 60s. Can't tell, don't care. <laughs> it's nice. We got a little bit of rain last night, plus lots of dew this morning. I left the cows way too long on that last row. I wanted to move them yesterday morning, but I had to get the sheep to market. And then I wanted to move them yesterday evening, but I had to take my daughter on a date for prom. None of the boys in the high school asked her out, so I'm not bitter about that at all. Yes, I am. I'm very bitter about that. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, so she, uh, we had to wait over an hour and a half to get our food. <laughs> that was not the plan. <laughs> so, I was planning on coming to the field after the date, before the sunset, but by the time I got home, it was already getting dark. And I was like, hey, it'll be an experiment. What happens if we leave them on a row too long? And, uh, you know, to be honest, um, I don't think they overgrazed it. I think we started getting close to overgrazing. But uh, I don't think they, they ruined it. So, I think it's great. Here we've got some runny manure. That's not good to see. Let's get you calves with your mamas, okay? Hey, you're, you're trying to escape me, but I'm kind of the only guy in the world helping you. You know, all right, I'm gonna get over here. I'm gonna wave my arms. You're gonna go the other way 37, 36. Come on, psst, psst. 36 looks kind of nice. Come on, psst, psst. Come on. no, don't f challenge me. Go to your mama's, cross the wire, well, pass the wire rather. There you go. See, you're smart little cookies. Uh, the grass is at least knee deep pretty much everywhere. Um, I'm seeing tons of rye grass, a lot of rye, cereal rye. If I've identified that correctly, let me zoom into cereal rye. Tons of this stuff. Um, lots of the Austrian winter pea. I just, I don't think I've ever seen so much of this stuff before. Here we have some Bermuda grass in between the... Uh, the, the the spring grasses and uh, lots of different kinds of clovers I see a lot of the tiny yellow flowers so I don't know what kind of clover that is but the clover with the tiny yellow flowers this guy right here um, Austrian winter pea is this plant here with the blue flowers very pretty blue pink purple I don't know what color that is uh, some of this grass which I don't know what this is but there's some of it. Not a lot, but some of it. Uh, Texas vervain. Let's see if I can find some Texas vervain. Oh, here's some ragweed. I believe that's ragweed. That's some dock. Here's some purple clovers. I'm calling it purple because that's the color of the flowers. I don't know what the actual name is. Milkweed. Uh, there's some more ragweed here. There's quite a bit of ragweed in this particular location. And... Uh, Where's the Texas vervain I saw? It's over here, right here. Yeah, has these nice uh, blue, purple flowers. Texas vervain. And uh, I'm just really encouraged. You know, uh, back in 2021 when I got this property, it was only growing ryegrass. And uh, I knew that was bad because there was nothing to fix nitrogen in the soil. And I kind of panicked a little bit and broke one of uh, the rules. The rule being, uh, don't plant anything in your pasture for the first two years. Just let things grow. See what you have before you start buying seeds. Because seed's expensive. And it's not easy to get seed to start growing. Um, some of the seeds you can just throw on the ground. And they do okay on their own. But uh, if they're going to do well throwing on the ground, they're probably already seed in the seed bank. Um, especially if people have been farming for 200 years, like they have here. So, um, yeah, I broke the rule. I put some uh, crimson clover down because I was panicked. I need some kind of clover. Um, I shouldn't have done that. You barely find any crimson clover, clover anywhere in my pasture. Uh, instead, you find all the different kinds of clovers there are. Um, clovers that I didn't even know existed. I've never seen before in my life. 
and they're just growing right alongside the grass, inside the grass practically. Right now, flies are kind of heavy, which is discouraging. Um, one thing I can try, I'll probably try this um, in a couple weeks, is to um, move the cows, do the skip grazing where we skip a row. That'll only put them 75 feet from their previous row, but that should make it a little harder for the flies to find them. Make the flies work a little harder for that drop of blood. And uh, hopefully put a little more pressure on the flies to not succeed so well. You know, I remember under that tree, I saw some of the, the golden, uh, golden uh, dung flies. They, they are actually a predator of the flies. They don't eat the cows. They don't like the cows, they just eat other flies. But I'll see if they're still there when I go back. Um, so that's encouraging to see that kind of stuff happening. So, yeah, I gave them three posts. Um, the goal is to uh, just let them graze. I wanna touch 80% of the grass. I wanna graze it one third of the way down. Um, I'm not doing some kind of total grazing system. I'm just following some advice that Greg Judy had. Um, he's he's very adamant. Don't go down to the ground. Don't uh, graze too much. And I don't think he's talking about this. I think he's talking about farmers that'll leave him another week on this spot of ground because there's so much forage on the ground. Um, I don't think he's referring to me. If he is, he can call me out by name and tell me I'm doing it wrong. I am doing it wrong in some way or another. But um, I think I think this is pretty good. So I've got way more ground than I can eat and uh, the goal is to probably go another two weeks number two or three weeks um, I'm doing 75 feet per row each row is half a week roughly so probably 150 225 feet and that won't even get me halfway to my pasture and then I'll start over again um, once the the first row there at the north starts to regrow I have the sheep there now um, so the sheep will eat a little bit, but I think the grass grows faster than they can eat it. Right now they're in the chicken coop, um, which is a problem. Anyway, yeah, the cows all seem filled in pretty nicely. You have to look at their left sides. I looked at them when they came in. I was kind of in a good spot to look at them, but uh, they all seem filled in nicely. So they weren't starving by any stretch of the imagination, but they were hoping to get some of this clover. I think they go for the clover. I think what's that, that's what they're trying to eat. The clover and the uh, uh, Austrian winter pea, they just love that stuff. You know. More power to them. All right, guys, I got to move the water and minerals, and then I'll be done. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.